It's Frank Fontaine's Showtime. Vaudeville is back. Give the cheer, sing a song. Vaudeville is back. It's been away too long. Play your day to day and work. It's play your rain or sleep. From the fabulous theaters and clubs of America, Showtime brings you a star-studded program of pop entertainment. It's curtain time on Showtime, and time to meet Frank Fontaine. I'm next. Uh -huh. Well, who'd you expect, Sir Winston Churchill? I'll give you Sir Winston Churchill. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here to represent the British Empire. You know, you have helped England in the past. And England expects you to help her again. You know, that's why they call England the mother country. She's always expecting. That was Sir Winston Churchill. But I'm Frankie Fontaine. And once again, I want to welcome you to Showtime. We have some outstanding performers to present to you. But before doing so, how about a word from, guess who? Our sponsor. <laughs> and now for a smooth band. Lawrence Welk and his champagne music. Champagne? Mmm, <laughs> the bubbles tickle my nose. Some time ago, Lawrence Welk and the boys made a tour of Mexico. 
I asked one of the boys, how about that water down there? How is it? He says, oh, we took precautions, all right. First we boiled it, then we filtered it, and just to make sure, we drank beer. <laughs> and now we go to another era where we find the old-fashioned barbershop quartet. The four men of song presenting my mustache. <laughs> my mustache is growing, it's in your won't be going, and someday it will gladden every eye. Though time will reveal it, I almost can feel it. Its charm will be exquisite by and by. Come, come, mustache, come. Why all your bashful delay? Oh, come, come forth like a fairy, so light and so airy, and ramble all my upper lips so deep. At dawn I'll awaken by soothing sleep forsaken. And gazing to my mirror with despair, my whole day is clouded in dark gloom and shrouded until I see reflected one new hair. Come, come, mustache, come. Why all your bashful delay? Don't come, come forth like a fairy, so light and so airy, and ramble on my upper lips so gay. I've twelve on a side now, I stroke them all with pride now. It's coming on, which no one can deny. The girls are beginning to say, but how they will adore it by and by. Come, come, mustache, come. Why all your bashful delay? Oh, come, come forth like a fairy, so light and so airy, and ramble all my upper lips. I like those barbershop quartets. The other day I was in a barbershop getting a haircut, and a fellow walked in, he said to the barber, how soon can you take me? The barber said, well, there's two ahead of you. So he turned around and walked out. Next day he walks in, he says to the barber, how soon can you take me? And the barber said, there's four ahead of you. He turned around and walked out. The third day he walks in, he says to the barber, how soon can you take me? The barber said, there's six ahead of you. He turned around and walked out again. The barber turns to the boot black and said, hey, uh, will you follow that guy and see where he goes? And he did. Ba boot black came back about a half hour later. The barber said, did you find out where he goes? The boot black says, yes. He goes to your house. <laughs> Here is a young lady with charm, beauty, and the ability to sing a song in a way that pleases most everyone. Miss Gloria Gray. No question about it, a man is a problem. He'll drive you out of your mind. He'll cheat and deceive you, that is, if you let him. And yet, and yet, he'll find It's so nice to have a man around the house Oh, so nice to have a man around the house Someone sweet who's glad he found you Who will put his arms around you And his kisses just Astound you, it's so nice. Oh, a house is just a house without a man. He's the necessary evil in your plan. There are many things about him you just cannot do without him, though it's just 
It's a constant game of cat and mouse. It's so nice to have a man around the house. It's so nice to have a man around the house. Mm -hmm. Oh, so nice to have a man around the house. Just a guy in tight and slippers who will share your breakfast kippers and will help you zip your zippers. It's so nice. Oh, a house is just a house without a man. He's a necessary evil in your plan. Someone kind who knows you treasure any simple little pleasure, like a full-length mink to cover last year's blouse. It's so nice to have a man, an ordinary man. It's so nice to have a man around the house. I'd like to tell you a little story. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a beautiful queen. Well, the queen had a little baby girl. <laughs> she was so cute. And because her skin was as white as snow, the queen said, I'm going to name her Snow White. Uh, isn't that cute? Well, one day, Snow White's mother, the queen, was very sick, and she died. And poor Snow White got a stepmother. And she was a mean one, too. She was married five times, and all of her husbands died from poisoning. And when she married Snow White's father, the coroner gave her away. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's so mean to Snow White that Snow White run away. And Snow White was walking through the woods, you know, just walking along. She wasn't doing nothing, just walking along, whittling in. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly she looked up and she saw a little house. So she went in and a table was all set for seven persons. Seven little persons. This was the house of the seven little dwarfs. Well, after a while, the seven little dwarfs came home and they found Snow White, and they made her welcome. Oh, they couldn't do enough for her. Back at the palace, the queen thought she'd gotten rid of Snow White. So she went to the mirror on the wall and said, mirror, mirror, on the wall, who, who's the fairest? Who, who's the, who's the fairest of them all? And the mirror said, queen, you are so fair. It's true. But Snow White is fairer than you. Well, the queen really blew a stack. She is really mad. She says, I'm going out and find that Snow White. I'll get a hold of her. So she put herself in a disguise. She wrapped her arm up full of bandages, and she stuck it in a sling. And she stuck her leg in a cast, and she hobbled along on crutches. She was disguised as a pedestrian. <laughs> <laughs> well, she comes to the little house and she knocks on the door. And Snow White says, who is it? Who is it? Who is that? Who is it? And the queen comes in and so sells her, sells her, sells her, soon sells her. No, she sells her. The queen, the queen sells her a coffin and she ties it real tight, so tight that poor Snow White falls over in a dead faint. Well, the seven dwarfs come home, and they find 
Snow White nearly, nearly dead. So they revived her. Oh, they revived her, and they're fixing her up. And they said, Snow White, never let anybody in the door, no matter who it is. <laughs> well, the next day, the next, the next, for not. The next day, the queen showed up again. And she knocked on the door. And Snow White said, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? And the queen came in and she said, I have a nice shiny apple for you, dear. And Snow White ate the, the, the apple and she fell over dead. Well, after a while, the seven dwarfs come home and they find Snow White. And oh, they felt so sad. They felt terrible. So they put her in a glass casket. And they were all feeling terrible about it. And one day, along came a prince, and he saw her in the glass, and he fell madly in love with her. And he said to the dwarf, can I, can I take her to my palace with me? I love her so much. Well, the, the seven dwarfs very sadly said, OK. <laughs> so they were carrying her out of the, out of the little house, and one of the dwarfs stumbled. And the jolt knocked the poison apple out of Snow White's mouth. And when the prince saw that she was alive, he broke open the glass and grabbed her in his arms and said, Darling, darling. And she said, Oh, oh, I'm a little broken up. And the prince said, Well, whoever put you back together again did a good job. <laughs> 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 So he grabbed her his arm and said, please come with me, my dear. I want to take you to my palace. And they rode off on his gray horse. His green, he had a black he rode off on the horse. And when they got to the palace, they both got married. And the prince said, darling, we're going to be married. And they were married. And then he said, Snow White, we're going to have 12 children. And if we like them, next year we're going to have 17 more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they live happily ever after. You know, when I was a kid, I thought the biggest thing was to be a member of a choir. In fact, I still think so. So I know I'm in for a big thrill, because next we have the Mitchell Choir Boys.
Today, after rehearsals, I took a couple of the Mitchell Choir boys to lunch with me. And one of the boys found fault with the chicken he was eating. I said, uh, will you tell me how you know the difference between an old chicken and a young chicken? He said, well, uh, Mr. Fontaine, that's easy. He said, I can tell by the teeth. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> you mean to say that, that the chicken have teeth? Do they really? He said, no, but I have. <laughs> it's always nice to introduce a star. This next gentleman is a star. He's tall, good-looking, plenty of savoir-faire, but most important, he's a great singer. Here he is, Lanny Roth. Make friends just like that. You're in style when you wear a boutonniere. A boutonniere, a boutonniere, a boutonniere. People smile when you wear a boutonniere. Remember, you can make a rose or gladiola stem look better than a gem in your lapel. If you are feeling blue, think what a flower will do. Just give the folks a view and you'll feel swell. If you're longing to be kissed and a girl should resist, I insist that you wear a boutonniere. A boutonniere, a boutonniere, a boutonniere. I insist that you wear a boutonniere. On the Easter promenade, on Zige Boulevard, you're in style when you wear a boutonniere. A boutonniere, boutonniere, a boutonniere. You're in style when you wear a boutonniere. Presidents of all the banks say they rose from the ranks when they started to wear a boutonniere. A boutonniere, a boutonniere, a boutonniere. When they started to wear a boutonniere. Remember, you can make a rose or gladiola stem look better than a gem in your lapel. Think what a flower will do if you are feeling blue. Just give the folks a view and you'll feel swell. If you're longing to be kissed and the girls should resist, I insist that you wear a boutonniere. Boutonniere, a boutonniere, a boutonniere. I insist that you wear a boutonniere. We insist that you wear a boutonniere. We insist that you wear a boutonniere. Handsome, isn't he? Speaking of handsome men, I know a woman whose husband disappeared, and she called up the police department and gave his description as handsome, six foot three, wavy hair, blue eyes, big broad shoulders, and an excellent dresser. Well, I was glancing at the paper after dinner, and I read about it. I picked up the telephone the next day, and I called her, and I said, I read where your husband was missing, but what kind of a description was that? Your husband is shot, fat, bald, and he dresses like a slob. She says, I know, but who wants that bum back? <laughs> Speaking of descriptions, let's listen to our sponsor. On behalf of all the artists who have appeared, I'd like to thank you for being with us. And try to make it a date next week, huh? Before saying goodbye, this is Frankie Fontaine reminding you that a small town is a place where if you see a young girl out with a man old enough to be her father, 
he is. <laughs> Bye, everybody. See you next week. Just one of them.